Hello, globe. Good that we're together. I'm standing for you here now pretty, pretty still. It used to be different when I was young. I was always walking and running around, making jokes, and people were looking for me. My mother said, where are you? So she put me on strings now and then. Stay put. Don't make jokes all the time. Don't talk all the time. At school, the same happened. I was more outside the classroom because of inside, because I was making jokes, making noises. I had a lot of fun because I thought schools were for that. Anyway, many rules at school and at home, many rules to break. So do you know, what did I study? I studied law. That's kind of funny, huh? And God, there are so many rules, so many rules to break. But I found actually out that rules can also help people, can empower people, can give people rights, can give people space in words. So it's good to know the purpose about the rules and how to make uh, rules work for people. That's why I try to study. After my study, I worked on a legal aid office in the Netherlands and giving advice to people who could not afford a lawyer, uh, giving rights to people, empower them. Uh, I did that six years, and then I worked for the Environment Ministry in the Netherlands. They were looking for lawyers because they wanted to have a good treaty for climate change, to agree globally a law to get the emissions to zero in the end. So it is a pretty tough rule, right? So what we did in the Kyoto Protocol, there was a climate treaty, we organized it in a different way. We gave more flexibility to countries. Instead of having one point here in a target, which they may fail, we organized to give them a budget. You have more space, more flexibility to actually meet the target. So that worked. And that inter made me interested in the game theory of mechanism design. And in game theory, you try to study what, how people behave, if, if they play games, how they play the rules, what incentives they need. And three researchers from the US, they got a Nobel Prize for a great idea. It's called mechanism design. They said if you have a public goal, uh, for example, environment, health, whatever, they say you need to have incentives for people that you actually are engaged and willing and happy to meet those targets. That's mechanism design. And a great example of that, you can see that, at least you could see it in Stockholm. That's the place where they got the Nobel Prizes. There was a, a metro station. Uh, Odenplan, and the city council thought, let's do more on health, let's make our people more healthier, tackle obesitas. So what they, they did is they changed the uh, stairs into steps into a keyboard of a piano. Here you see it here. And if you step the stairs, you hear music. And it actually worked. People were walking like hell every day. They got rid of the metro station now because people were working all the time, all the day. So no more obesitas. No, that's not really the reason, but it worked. So if you give uh, the chance for people to have fun when they walk the stairs instead of taking the escalators, it helps. So you see there are tough rule, health, and mechanism design to help people to meet the target. So how can we translate and use that for climate change? In Europe, it's an example, there are 10,000 companies, big polluters, they need to meet the CO2 targets. And of course, you can choose to give them all the same rules, the same tough rules, get to zero. There's not much uh, flexibility. And all companies are different. There are um, newer ones, older ones. So they give this idea about a mechanism design, cap and trade. So you have this budget, slowly decreasing over time. You see the piano there. So how does cap and trade give fun and still meet the targets? By allowing companies to, they got part of those units of the budget, and the cleaner companies, they invest earlier, they recycle more, they use renewables, they can sell their allowances. And all the companies that want to invest later, they need to purchase those allowances. So you see that uh, this game of climate, uh, the cleaner companies can win, and the dirtier they need to pay. In the end, the climate wins, because the budget, as you saw, is decreasing up to zero. And this is a good example of tough rules and a mechanism design incentives to make this game really work. Another example of uh, mechanism design is, it helps to you all, I think. You all like coffee and chocolate, right? Did you drink coffee today? I had some great coffee here in Wageningen, a good Nespresso and Espresso. Great, but there's a big problem with coffee and chocolate. 20% of the global emissions is because of deforestation. We lose a lot of trees every day because of your coffee. So what you need to do is to look for climate neutral coffee. How do we do this? I know we in Europe, we have our targets, we need to get to zero. But the global emissions should also get to zero. So the mechanism design works as follows. If you pay for this climate-neutral coffee, 
um, the governments of those countries, there are almost 50 forest nations, they can invest the money uh, in su more sustainable farming, more productive farming, so that they need to cut less trees. There's some more sh shade trees over the coffees, and it actually works. So you can reduce emissions. Part of the reductions can be used also by the Europeans, because we pay for that coffee and reduce the emissions there as well. So this is also a very good example of mechanism design. Had the goal is clear. It's a pretty tough rule. You know, we didn't like rules in the beginning. But if you help people and governments and companies to, uh, to make them engaged and giving fun and in rewards to meet the targets, it can actually work. So I say put the, uh, uh, yeah, put the, the strings to the emissions, but not to the people. Because climate is a serious game. Thank you. Thank you.